Years ago, I made two videos on strange elevators that go both horizontally and vertically. The first was in Genoa, Italy. It's a little cabin that travels along a tunnel, which then gets loaded into a regular vertical elevator. The second is in a test tower in Rottweil in Germany. It uses fancy, complicated locking mechanisms and linear induction motors. But the key thing about both those designs is they come to a complete stop when changing direction. Because of how elevators work, safely and smoothly transitioning from horizontal to vertical just isn't possible. Or at least I thought so. But it turns out that the Schmid People Mover has been doing exactly that for about 20 years. Only three of these have ever actually been installed. Only two of them still exist. This is the larger one at a train station in Altbach, Germany. It took me a long time to understand how this works and how it works safely. I had to hire an engineering consultant to look at the original patents and break it down for me. And also, with the help of a producer in Germany, I tracked down the inventor. My firm stellt Maschinen und Automatisierungsanlagen her für die Automobilindustrie. Hat mich das immer gestört? Kann das im heutigen Zeitalter noch sein, dass wegen einem Fußgänger der ganze Verkehr anhalten muss? Meine ganzen Mitarbeiter, die haben mich einfach für bekloppt gehalten, wo ich das Modell da vorgeführt habe. Und trotzdem habe ich da immer dran weitergearbeitet. Ich habe dann auch Verbindung aufgenommen mit der Straße und mit der Bahn und die haben dann sehr interessiert sich gezeigt. Dann habe ich zwei, drei Jahre gebastelt nebenher, bis ich dann eine Lösung hatte. This cabin isn't being pulled by cables. The motor is in the cabin itself. It pulls itself along by turning a pair of cogs up top that sit at rack rails, one on each side of the cabin. So this is basically a cog railway, a very fancy one with anti-shake devices, but a suspended cog railway. And that explains the smooth transition to vertical at the top. The cogs just follow the rails as they curve. But how does it do this safely and then travel vertically without, you know, falling to the ground? Well, like the elevator in Genoa, it does get a bit of help on the vertical part. It locks onto a carrier device and a counterweight with safety systems that are roughly equivalent to a regular elevator. The carrier is what you can see start moving through the window as you transition to vertical movement. And meanwhile, down at the bottom, the counterweight sits on calibrated springs so that as this cabin starts to transfer to vertical, the counterweight gently lifted away from the springs and everything balanced. There is an elegant but also quite complicated docking and undocking mechanism up there in the roof for the cabin and the carrier. The closest analogy I can come up with is that it's a, a bit like closing an up and over garage door. Everything just sort of slides into place. The people mover wurde bei uns in der Fabrik komplett aufgestellt und getestet. Und dann hat die Bahn uns nur vier Stunden genehmigt zum Aufsteller. War für uns aber kein Problem. Der Pipelmur wurde angeliefert in drei Teile, linker Turm, rechter Turm und die Brücke und äh, mit dem Kranwagen äh, reingehoben, Brücke drüber. Da sind wir sogar noch eine Stunde früher fertig gewesen. Und somit musste die Bahn nur die drei Stunden nachts frei halten. Viel, viel billiger, wie wenn sie hätte eine Unterführung gebaut oder eine Brücke drüber. It's a wonderful design, but it's also complicated. And the alternative is to put in an underpass or two mass-produced elevators and a footbridge between them. Because if one of those elevators breaks down, well, it can be fixed by any qualified technician using off-the-shelf parts instead of someone who has to be specially trained for this one rare bit of equipment. And if you have a footbridge, you probably also have stairs. So if one of those elevators breaks down, there's a backup. It doesn't work for everyone, but it's better than nothing. And that also means that if you are late for your train and physically able, you can just run up, across and down the footbridge instead of waiting for the people mover to arrive. Now that said, there are advantages to this system. Uh, it requires much less land uh, than a regular footbridge does. Uh, it doesn't need tunnelling like an underpass. And if you have heavy or bulky bags where well, you don't have to haul them in and out of multiple elevators and across the footbridge, it just takes them across for you. I had here for a an Erlebnis with a Rollstuhlfahrer, der hat mir gesagt, er konnte in seinem ganzen Leben noch nie ohne Begleitperson mit dem Zug bis Stuttgart fahren. Weil es gibt hier keine Unterführung und äh, sonst gar nichts. Und jetzt kann er alleine rein, rüberfahren, nach Stuttgart fahren, zurück. Kein Problem mehr. Und das war ja auch der Grund, dass die Bahn das gemacht hat, um behindertengerecht den Bahnhof zu machen. I think there is a possible world in which this design became popular and the parts became off the shelf and 
This became the standard. I don't think it's a bad invention. It's very clever. It solves a specific problem. But when there are more common and more reliable alternatives that are just a bit more hassle to install, well, not many places want to take the risk.